and oh. uh, Robert, who is from the uh, Cambridge Computer Laboratory, and his colleague Ross, and he and they are going to talk about irritational motion of a compressible inviscid fluid. Thank you very much. Um, so, uh, the irritational motion of a compressible fluid has been studied for a very long time. An example of a compressible fluid is the air. It has sound waves and things like that. It was studied by Leonard Euler in the, in the, in the 1700s. And he took the idealisation that the fluid had no viscosity and no thermal conductivity. Um, and it's taught to undergraduates, so this should be the sort of talk, hopefully, that should be accessible uh, fairly widely. Um, one thing I want to emphasise is through it, I will write down no equations that are related, no equations of quantum mechanics. Every equation I will write down is completely classical, as you would expect for Euler's equation. <coughs> This is Euler's equation. I'm not particularly going to go into the details. U is the velocity of motion of the fluid, the U by dt, but U dot grad U is, a, is really the Bernoulli term, and minus 1 over rho grad P, rho is the density, and P is the pressure, so that's, that's like a force pushing the fluid around. And what most people do is they say, well, if the fluid is compressible, like the air, then at low amplitude it reduces to this equation, which is the standard wave equation, where it turns out c is the speed of sound, c squared is dp by d rho. And it has solutions like this, for example sound, and slightly more exotic solutions, and these are breaking the sound barrier. Fairly, hopefully fairly familiar with that. Now, um, here are some what are called rotational solutions. I'm going to look at irrotational solutions, but let's just first of all look at rotational solutions. This is a hurricane. And what happens in this hurricane is that if I were to walk around like that, the wind would always be at my back. And so the integral of the fluid speed times dot, the length that I follow, integral UDL, is not zero. That's what we mean by a rotational solution. And we're going to look at some irrotational equivalent solutions that are like these, but irrotational. <coughs> Another example is something that happens in dolphins, which is that these are little air rings, and they're a bit like smoke rings, in fact. And what happens is there's rotation around the thing. And I've got a video of it. What you'll see is, hopefully this will work. We're going to have to skip the video. Skip to the advert. So, if I can get the sound going, I don't know if I can. up to this surface and has created this little ring, which it then plays with. Very beautiful. And this is the equivalent, I would almost say, of a high energy particle accelerator, because you can see that these things act a bit like what, are, what in other fields you would call a quasi-particle. And these quasi-particles can split up and so on. So, there are solutions like that, but I'm going to look at irrotational equivalents of that. Irrotational solutions, which 
I'm going to call a quasi-particle, a bit like those the things that the dolphins are playing with. So this is a this is a solution to the wave equation. Jm is a cylindrical vessel function, and there's a cos over minus t, and there's a there's an angle. Well, in the case m equals naught, this is a well-known sort of solution that you see in um, in puddles. It's just a cylindrically symmetrical solution, like a bit like cylindrical sound waves. In the case, but this is in two dimensions, of course I'm um, talking about a three-dimensional uh, equivalent. So in three dimensions, you get something that looks a bit like this, for m equals 1. What happens here is, it's the, still a solution to this, m is 1, and so this is, this is an area of compression, which is just schematic, I'm just drawing a line across here an area of compression, and this is an area of rarefaction. And what happens is, this whole thing is rotating like that. And you will see that, of course, the flow goes with, this is, this shows the fluid flows, the flow goes with the area of compression, <coughs> and in the rarefaction, of course, because the rarefaction is going that way and it's a negative density, the flow is in the same direction. So the flow is symmetrical, and it turns out the flow is completely irrotational. If you took a path around, if you took a path around here, the, the wind would be on your back here, and it would be on your front there, and the total would be zero. It looks like this as it rotates. <coughs> that may be a helpful way of viewing it. Does this any work for compressors? This only works for compressible fluids, I believe. It, there may be, possibly, you might, that actually in superfluid helium, helium-3, there's something called second sound, and it's not actually due to compressibility, it's due to something else. And, it, and there may be some sort of connection with what are called rotons here, but um, essentially I'm only looking at a compressible fluid. Okay? If you curve that eddy, the, these, these solutions I've just described, they're, they're, they're documented, but they're generally reckoned to be unphysical because they're infinitely long, and something that's infinitely long has an infinite amount of fluid energy. It's not very physical. But of course, just like a smoke ring, they can be curved into a ring. And you get a quasi-particle solution which is similar to the dolphin air rings we saw earlier. This is one of them. Um, I won't particularly bother. I'll, I'll focus on the, the pretty stuff rather than the equation. But for those who are interested, this is a spherical vessel function where you're doing integration along the. Along the it's a sum of spherical vessel functions uh, based around here. So it's a solution to the <coughs> wave equation. And if you want to look, what, see what that looks like. It looks like this. So what you can see is, right, this is the area of compression, and it's twisting around like that. And it turns out that if you had an imaginary sort of particle entrained in the fluid in the middle, the particle would go up and down like that, across the centre center line. This looks actually remarkable. This pattern here looks remarkably like the pattern we saw earlier, with the in, in two dimensions in the surface of a uh, of a puddle. The other thing you can do, of course, is there's another solution where instead of just bending the eddy into a ring, you can give it a twist first and then bend it around. And it looks like this. You can see this is sort of bent round, like that, and that one's bent round the other way. And this is the, 
This here is m is 1, n is 0, and it's the angular round here. And this here is r, I call it r11. m is 1, n is equals 1, at a quantized, of course. And it turns out that this motion you saw earlier erupting from the centre resolves into a spin around the axis. I think that's probably best, easiest to see that in an animation. So what's happening is, if you can imagine this twisted thing is erupting from the middle, going round, and it resolves into that spin. <coughs> what's, the, uh, what's, the solution, what's the linear solutions are known in mathematics. This bending into a ring is, I believe, not, uh, not previously known. Now, these are solutions of a linear equation. These are, uh, well, okay, at low amplitude, they are a solution to a linear <coughs> equation, yes. And these are solutions to a, it turns out that there are, um, what actually happens is, for, as, a, as a pure dynamicist, you're probably aware, that in, they're very similar to a vortex. In a vortex, there is a uh, motion near the centre which causes a reduced Bernoulli pressure. And so if you have, if you've got one of these, if you, got, if you had one of these trapped between two surfaces, there would be a force of attraction between the surfaces, which belies, betrays an attraction along the length of the, the eddy. And in the case of a one of these smoke rings, that non-linear, those non-linear terms tend to make this smoke ring shrink. Now it can't, of course, completely disappear because it, you can't continuously get rid of, rid of stuff. But does that make, does that answer your okay, question? Okay, but, but the, these, are you sure this, are a solution of a linear these equation? Are solutions to a linear <coughs> equation? And are they stable? <coughs> yes. Yes. Might be. Have a look at the paper. There's quite a lot of proof to do with the stability, but they are stable. In particular, I think it's quite well known in, um, in, in a number of uh, knot theories and so on that actually these things tend to shrink. And of course, because they tend to shrink, they can't, they can't because they're quantized, they can't get rid of their, their spin and so on. <coughs>